The Arctic is disappearing. In just a few years, the North Pole could see its first ice-free summer in the last 125,000 years. But a bold new experiment might turn back the clock. Scientists are refreezing the Arctic. If they succeed, they could save the North Pole. But if they fail, they could trigger unforeseen disasters. So, which way would things go? Well, here's some backstory. Deep in the Arctic, temperature drops so low that metal cracks and winds scream across the ice. In winter, it's minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit on average. But despite the seemingly extreme cold, it's actually melting, warming two to three times faster than the rest of the planet. Now, ice is like Earth's natural mirror. It reflects sunlight back into space, keeping the planet cool. When it melts, it exposes the dark ocean underneath. The ocean absorbs sunlight instead of reflecting it, and it spreads all across the planet. This warms the planet even faster, melting even more ice. It's a vicious cycle, and if it continues, we'll reach a point where the ice won't come back. That thick, ancient ice that has covered the North Pole for thousands of years is already 95% gone. It's been disappearing since the 1980s. The ice that remains there now is thin and fragile. And when it disappears, it will trigger a dangerous chain reaction. Meanwhile, a group of researchers from a UK startup called Real Ice is out there trying to slow down or even reverse the melting of the Arctic. The project takes place in a tiny frozen village in Canada called Cambridge Bay. Real Ice wants to break the vicious cycle. And here's their plan. First, they drill through the existing ice and place an underwater pump beneath it. Then they pump seawater onto the ice surface, where it quickly freezes into an extra-thick layer. Finally, they remove snow from the ice, which usually acts like a blanket, preventing further freezing. After that, ice keeps growing – stronger, thicker, and harder to melt. It's a simple idea inspired by nature itself. Ice naturally forms this way in some Arctic regions, but now scientists want to do it on a massive scale. So far, it appears to be working. Between January and May 2024, they covered around 44,000 square feet of ice, and it became 20 inches thicker on average. And in November 2024, they started a new round of tests. In the first 10 days of the trial, the ice was already 4 inches thicker. Now they'll return in May 2025 to check out how things are going. They think it's going to get between around 16 to 31 inches of it during the Arctic winter. It's a small start, admittedly, but if they can prove it works, their plan is to expand across an area more than twice the size of California, about 386,000 square miles of ice. And they're not stopping there. The big idea is to send in 500,000 underwater drones, powered by clean energy, to automate the entire process. These drones would drill holes, pump water, and refreeze the ice without human intervention. But not everyone is convinced. Some scientists think this whole idea is a disaster waiting to happen. First, they point out that saltier ice, the one from seawater pumped onto it, melts faster in the summer. So if this new ice melts too quickly, we could end up making the situation worse. Some of them also think this is a dangerous distraction from the core problem, like treating the symptoms instead of the root causes. Besides, making a small patch of ice thicker is one thing. But doing this across the entire Arctic? That's another challenge entirely. Another thing they're worried about is the ecosystem. The Arctic is one of the most fragile ecosystems on Earth. Changing ice thickness could affect marine life, disrupt algae growth, and impact the food chain in ways we don't fully understand. There's also the question of money. Real Ice estimates that refreezing the entire Arctic will cost about $5 to $6 billion per year. Who's paying for this? Right now, they're self-funded with some investors backing them. But eventually, they hope that countries, global funds, and even corporations will finance the project. Real Ice argues that doing nothing could be far worse. If we don't act, we could lose the Arctic within our lifetime. That could at least help to buy more time to fix the planet. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Now, the idea of saving the Arctic ice isn't new. Over the years, scientists have suggested some pretty wild plans to stop the melting. In 2017, there was the initial wind-powered pump plant. Physicist Stephen Desch proposed installing about 10 million wind-powered pumps in the Arctic. 
These pumps would pull seawater up onto the ice, kind of like real ice. It would freeze in the cold winter months, creating a thicker ice layer. The biggest problem is that someone would have to run this entire show. And what happens if something goes wrong? In 2018, there was the glass beads plan, which was supposed to start in 2020s. A team called the Arctic Ice Project suggested covering the Arctic with tiny reflective glass beads. Yep, glass balls. The idea was basically to replace the ice's mirror effect. The beads would bounce sunlight away, keeping the ice colder for longer. The plan is being tested by a group of scientists working with the Arctic Ice Project. They say the glass balls are made of a material that's safe for animals. They even claim birds use similar materials to help them digest food. The glass used in these microspheres is the same material used in lab equipment and light bulbs. Sounds safe, right? Well, not so fast. There's also the environmental risk. These glass balls are tiny, and they could easily get into the ocean, impacting everything from fish to plankton. We still need more research to understand how this material breaks down in the ocean and whether it could affect marine life. But where things get really crazy is when we start talking about scaling this up. To cover just a tiny fraction of the Arctic, they would need millions of tons of these tiny microspheres. And that's just for starters. And they'd have to be working 24-7 through freezing temperatures and snowstorms. The scientists believe this could help keep the ice thick enough to survive summer and even slow the melting. But can it really work? Then there's also the Bright Ice Initiative, founded by the same folks behind the Arctic Ice Project. Instead of focusing on the Arctic Ocean, they want to use the same glass microspheres to restore glaciers. They've even tried this out on a glacier in Iceland. But experts are still skeptical. They say it could just speed up melting instead of reversing it. Now, another idea was cloud seeding with water particles. This would involve spraying ocean water into the sky itself. This would form clouds, and they'd reflect more sunlight. So, as you can see, some of these plans were too expensive, too complicated, or just straight-up wild. The real ISIS plan borrows ideas from earlier projects, but is much cheaper and more practical. Most importantly, it's working. But all this Arctic disaster is already affecting people. In the village of Newtok, Alaska, the land is disappearing. Each year, about 70 feet of the riverbank erodes, taking homes and history with it. That's all because of the erosion and the thawing permafrost. Now, these people had to move to a safer place called Murtavik, just 9 miles away. But it's a long and challenging journey. The relocation is taking years of planning, with New Talk residents already starting the shift in 2019. The new village offers better health and safety, but it's still a work in progress. Things like the school and grocery store remain in the old village, which makes things harder. Water and sewage systems are being set up, and for now, most residents are using a honey bucket system. But at least they have a chance to rebuild. It's still unclear whether these geoengineering ideas are a lifeline or a disaster. For now, we can just keep an eye on them. You're down in one of those polar seas where the brinicle, eerily called the finger of death, is born. It's a strange, almost otherworldly place. The deep ocean, where light barely reaches. Everything down there seems to have adapted to survive in darkness and intense cold. But even those truly hardy creatures aren't ready for what a brinical can do. When that briny, super-cooled water starts dripping down, a ghost story begins. The formation of these brinicles is a fascinating process, like an underwater science experiment happening in real time. We know that when seawater freezes, it doesn't freeze like fresh water. Because of all the salt in it, it has to push out impurities to form the pure ice that floats at the top. This means the salty water, or brine, ends up trapped in channels and pockets within the ice. When it sees the light of day for the first time, a brinicle resembles a pipe of ice reaching down from the underside of a layer of sea ice. At first, a brinicle is very fragile and its walls are thin. But the continuous flow of colder brine supports the growth of the brinicle. It also prevents it from melting. Otherwise, this process would be inevitable, caused by the brinicle's contact with less cold surrounding water. As the ice accumulates and the walls become thicker, 
the brinicle becomes more stable. Over time, the brine trapped inside gets squeezed out through tiny cracks, dripping down in this cold, heavy plume. Once that cold brine starts flowing downward, it begins freezing the seawater around it into a sheath of ice. That's why instead of melting as it hits the water below, it forms this icy casing that protects it, helping it grow longer and stronger. The brinicle keeps moving forward inch by inch, and this crazy downward spiral is almost unstoppable. And when it touches down on the seafloor, uh-oh, that's when the trouble begins for anything living nearby. Imagine being one of those creatures on the seafloor, maybe a sea star or an unsuspecting urchin just trying to make it through the day. And all of a sudden, you see this icy tentacle nearing you. It isn't just some cold water coming down, it's basically a net of ice moving down and spreading out. There's no escape, no way to predict it's coming, and no chance for survival. It's a slow motion natural disaster in action. When a brinicle reaches the seafloor, it continues to accumulate ice while the surrounding water freezes over. The brine keeps traveling across the seafloor in a downslope direction. Once it reaches the lowest possible point, it stops and pools. But don't let the danger distract you from how beautiful brinicles are. Well, in their own creepy way. They look like something you'd see in a dream. Elegant, twisting ice tubes reaching down, perfectly symmetrical and totally random. Filming a brinicle is no easy task because they're delicate when they first form. Just the motion from a nearby current or a sudden change in temperature can snap them off, ending the show before it really starts. So, scientists who managed to capture brinicles on film in 2011 actually got incredibly lucky. It was the first time the world got to see this icy finger descending and freezing everything it touched and it changed our understanding of polar ecosystems. Brinicles can reach quite impressive sizes. Sometimes they can stretch for several feet. Their size depends on the conditions of the water and ice above. The slower the water movement and the colder the temperature, the bigger and stronger a brinicle can grow. But if the water's too deep or if there's too much movement in the current, the brinicle is likely to break apart. It needs just the right balance to survive long enough to touch down and freeze over the ocean floor. For creatures living on the seafloor, brinicles are like invisible booby traps, only instead of avoiding a net, they're avoiding an expanding ice cage. Starfish and sea urchins might not have big brains, but they have a basic survival instinct to crawl away from danger. Sadly, with brinicles, they're usually caught completely off guard. One second they're minding their own business, the next an icy sheet is closing in around them, trapping them where they are and freezing them almost instantly. It's hard not to feel sympathy for these creatures, right? You watch footage of a brinicle in action and you see a starfish just stopping. One moment it's moving slowly along the sand and then it's frozen in place, totally helpless. It's like watching a train wreck in slow-mo. Luckily. Brinicles present danger only to smaller marine life forms like sea urchins and starfish. Bigger animals like seals or whales, or humans who happen to go diving in the ocean at the frigid poles, brinicles are totally harmless. At the same time, for scientists, this tough natural phenomenon offers a fascinating insight into how life adapts, or fails to adapt for that matter, in extreme environments. And it gets even better. A brinicle might just be the perfect setup for life to begin. Researchers are now looking at these super salty ice tubes as not just fatal traps, but potentially as sources of life. This theory isn't just science fiction, it's rooted in actual research. Here's how it goes. The brine channels in sea ice are full of tiny, confined spaces. Those are exactly the kind of places where chemicals can get trapped, concentrated and start interacting in interesting ways. It's like setting up a mini lab where the building blocks of life can come together and create something new. Scientists think this process of salt rejection in sea ice could have actually helped the first bits of life appear. Some researchers even think that this process might be happening right now on icy moons like Europa, Ganymede, or Enceladus where there might have been frozen seas beneath thick ice layers. 
just imagine it. Brinnacles forming in other worlds of our solar system, laying down the foundations for extraterrestrial life. And all thanks to the same icy process that creates these fingers of death here on Earth. One way scientists describe brinnacles is by comparing them to chemical gardens. Have you ever done one of those experiments where you mix metal salts into a solution and watch them produce plant-like structures? Well, you can observe a similar chemical process when a brinnacle is in action. In the cold, saline-rich brine of a brinnacle, certain reactions could kick off to create amino acids or other building blocks of life. It's wild to think that something so dangerous could have also helped shape our world, or could be creating other forms of life elsewhere. In both cases, whether on Earth or on another planet, these icy chemical reactions might be the first step toward the formation of simple life forms. It's a kind of alchemy, where ice and salt water mix to create something more than the sum of their parts. This is one reason why scientists are so eager to study brinnacles. Each one could hold a tiny clue about how life begins, survives, or fails under extreme conditions. Something as mesmerizing and weird, but at the same time simple as brinnacles, hints at bigger questions. How did life start on Earth? What are the conditions needed for life to survive in extreme environments? Could icy structures like these exist in other parts of our solar system or beyond, creating similar conditions that might one day give rise to alien life? As much as they look like a silent threat reaching out from the ice, brinnacles are also reminders of how beautifully complex and interconnected our world is. They may seem like simple fingers of ice, but they hold secrets that touch on everything from ecology to chemistry to the origins of life itself. So next time you hear about the ocean, remember that deep below in the darkest, coldest waters, something incredible and a little bit terrifying is happening right at this moment. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos.